Engineers love bubbles. Mechanical engineers heat the bubbles. Plasma engineers zap the bubbles. Computer scientists simulate the bubbles. Nuclear engineers moderate the bubbles. Data scientists create fake bubbles with generative adversarial neural networks. The bubble rabbit hole goes a lot deeper than my short attention span can handle. But the good news is that you get some pretty cool photos from all of this scientific work. I wanted to see if I could take some cool photos of bubbles as well. And let me show you how I did it. Okay, so what I've got here is a high-tech bubble chamber. It is a cookie jar with a lid that no longer has a rubber seal to keep your cookies fresh. I have a bubble blowing apparatus, two bendy straws taped together. The plan is to focus on the tip of the bendy straw in order to focus on the bubble. And in case those bubbles are too big, I've got two attachments. One of them, if I can get it in focus, has one tiny hole poked in with a screw with the main end blocked off. And I have a second straw with two holes poked inside of it with the main end blocked off. And last but not least, because we're doing science, I have my safety goggles. Let's commence the bubble blowing. The results with the iPhone aren't too bad. They look pretty clean up until you freeze frame it. And then you'll notice there's a lot of motion blur. And trying to take a still photo with my iPhone didn't help either. Now one thing that did help was enabling my iPhone's slow motion feature. It just captures it at a higher refresh rate, which is why you're seeing the lights flicker, because it's capturing faster than the lights are producing light. And you'll see that the results are a bit cleaner than before. If you freeze frame the video, you'll notice there's significantly less motion blur, though there's probably more than what we would want in a final result for a scientific paper. I swapped over to using my DSLR camera and I started to secure the straw in place with tape. I noticed that when I was blowing into the straw, the straw was moving quite a bit and that was ruining the focus. I also noticed here that I needed two pieces of tape, not just one at the top, otherwise it was going to be moving around a lot. So I ended up draining the tank, taping the inside again, and then taping it again at the top. So it turns out smartphones do a lot when they do point and shoot cameras. Um, I did not have this in focus. You can actually see it's focusing on the front of the glass chamber instead of the bubbles, which is what we wanted. I had set up the focus to be on the straw, but I had the camera on the wrong setting. So every time I tried taking a photo, it would switch the focus. So at this point, I thought the jar needed some modifications. I ended up getting some paper and taping it to the back of the jar so there would be contrast against the bubbles, but I thought this might prevent too much light from getting in, so I put a desk lamp with two light bulbs to shine on the back to illuminate the bubbles. There was a story earlier in the year about how the ocean was set on fire, and this is kind of what it reminds me of. There's too much light in this photo, and there's still a lot of motion blur. So I can crank down the aperture and increase the shutter speed, and we get the following. So these pictures are actually starting to look good. With all the motion blur gone, you can actually see the fine edges of the bubbles and the shapes they make as they deform, as they rise through the chamber due to buoyancy forces. It's still a little dark though, and that's an inherent trade-off you have between shutter speed and available light. So I think we hit the sweet spot here between light and motion blur. It's illuminated enough that you can see the edges even more clearly, and you can actually see bubbles within the bubbles. I do want to show what the effects are when you have a slower shutter speed versus a faster shutter speed, and that will be shown right here. You can see on the left, the slower shutter speed has more motion blur, and on the right side, you have more fine detail shown. I got photos with the other two straws with the smaller holes. The camera settings were a bit darker, but I still think you get good fidelity from these shots. With the straw that had the one tiny hole, I had to blow a lot harder, and that was due to the diameter difference between the entrance of the straw and the exit. It was a little bit easier with the two holes in the last straw. I'm really proud of the last two photos because you can see I induced some very turbulent bubbles.